The angels of God rejoice over what? Let's read about it in Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming close to him to hear him. Now, I want you to understand that in those days, tax collectors were, they didn't have the best reputation at all. They did not have the best reputation. They were known as being thieves. They were known as being ripoffs because they were known to collect a little bit more tax than they should have just so they can pocket some extra money. They didn't have the best reputation at all. So all the tax collectors and sinners came close to Jesus to hear him. The Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Hmm. Jesus is welcoming sinners? That doesn't sound right. Isn't he a holy man? Isn't, isn't, isn't he, you know, uh, a man who has the reputation of being a great holy teacher, rabbi, you know, the teacher of Jesus, or the teacher of Israel? Verse 3. He told them this parable. Now, this is what Jesus said. This is Jesus' own words, the words in red. Which of you men, if you, have, if you had 100 sheep and lost one of them, wouldn't leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that was lost until he found it? And when he has found it, he carried it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that even so, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous who need no repentance. I'm going to stop here for a second because I think it's very important to understand what the word repents here means. Okay? Repent doesn't mean to feel sorry, although that's what a lot of people mean it mean when they say repent, that's what they mean to feel sorry. Oh, I feel sorry, I repent. No. To repent means to change. You can really truly repent without really shedding a tear. To repent means to turn, to change, to you know, to change your lifestyle, to change the way you think about about things in life. Let's read on. Verse 8. Or what woman, if she had ten drachma coins? Now, a drachma, it says here, is worth about two days, two days wages for an agricultural laborer. If she lost one drachma coin, wouldn't light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she found it? When she, when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I had lost. Even so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner repenting. So let me say this again. Jesus said, these are the words in red, the, red, the words of our Lord. Jesus said, even so... I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner repenting. One sinner will cause heaven to rejoice when that sinner repents. One sinner that repents will cause the angels of God to rejoice. You want heaven? You want heaven to throw a party for you? Repent of your sin. That doesn't mean just feeling sorry for what you've done and keep on doing what, you, what, what you've done. It doesn't mean that. It means that you have found a way, you have found power to change your life. Sometimes that means you have to turn from sin. You know, some people can do it themselves. They can turn from sin. Yes, they can. Sometimes that means that you need extra help from God. You need extra help from heaven to do so. Sometimes that means a lot of prayer. Sometimes that means a lot of fighting in the spiritual realm. It means, actually, sometimes that means spiritual warfare. Sometimes that, sometimes that means a lot of fasting and prayer. But you can overcome. God has the, he has the will it's God's will, and he has the power to cause you, to, to help you to repent and to make you a holy person, an ex-sinner. 
a sinner who has repented, a, a person that's a totally different person than, than, uh, than you used to be. Okay? You want the angels of heaven to rejoice. Repent of your sin, which means turn from it, which means what you, what you have been doing, do no more. Jesus said time and time again, go and sin no more. He didn't say, well, you're a human and I understand you're a human, you know, and so, you know, we all make mistakes. That's not what he says. Again, you got to understand what sin is as opposed to a mistake. People can make mistakes and still not sin because a sin is actually transgress, trans, being a transgressor or breaking God's law. There's a lot of mistakes that people can do and it's not actually breaking God's law. Okay. For example, I can write a letter and make a spelling mistake. That's not breaking God's law. There's no commandment that says that God hates a person who doesn't spell right. <laughs> There's no commandment that says that God, you know, thou shalt not, you know, make a spelling mistake. So that's not a sin. That's not perfection in the eyes of men, but that is not a sin, which means God, to God, it means nothing to him. It, it, it's not a it's not an imperfection in God's sight, really. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Jesus would not command you to do something that you are not able to do. He's not like that. He's not that kind of person. You know, he's not, a, he's not abusive in that way. He's not a tyrant to, to say, go and sin no more. He said that a couple times to people, you know, uh, go and sin no more. Sin no more. Why would he say sin no more? Because it is possible to sin no more. Knowing that it's possible, you need to call out to him. You need to repent. You need to repent of your sin, which means change. Stop sinning and call unto God. If you need help, he'll help you. And once again, thank you for watching and may God give you the power to repent of your sin. And if those of you who have already repented of your sins... May God give you the power and the urgency to preach so that others will repent of their sins and you could actually cause the angels of heaven to throw a big party. Okay? And once again, let me, let me make this very clear before I end this. Is, this is not just getting a sinner to say the sinner's prayer. No. Because there's so many. The vast, vast, vast majority of sinners that have said the sinner's prayer just keep on sinning. There's no repentance there. Even if they say, I repent of my sin, and they, and they go, and the next day they do the same thing, or the next, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't mean repentance whatsoever. That's not repentance. That's not salvation. That's not, that's not being saved of your sin. That's, that's just basically, you know, an empty can making noise. I mean, no, you can, you can repent of your sins and get saved without, it, without ever saying the sinner's prayer, you know. And by the way, the sinner's prayer is not even in the scriptures explicitly. So, you know, the, the gospel is repent and believe, you know, repent of your sins and believe. Some people have a hard time believing because they haven't repented of their sins. If they've repented of their sins, it's easy to believe. Makes it a lot easier to believe something once you have changed your lifestyle. If you have a lifestyle that is against the Word of God, it sometimes can be hard to believe the Word of God because your lifestyle is, you know, with your mouth you say you believe, but with your actions you actually disbelieve. So uh, you need to repent, change your life, change your mind, humble yourself, turn away from sin, and believe. And God will begin a journey in your life. He will begin you, he will start you on a journey that would be the most marvelous, most fantastic thing you've ever experienced in your life. And you'll never, ever regret it. So God give you the blessings and, uh, and the power. Open the eyes of your understanding to the, to the scriptures as you seek him and show you great and mighty things in the name of Jesus. Thank you.